Hello and welcome to Gothic Reviews. Today we are reviewing the 1973 animated Adam's Family cartoon series. I call it the lesser known cartoon series because usually when one thinks of Adam's Family cartoons, they think of the one from the 90s. And this one is lesser known. A lot of people didn't know about this one, so we wanted to kind of introduce it to you guys and give you our thoughts on it. Because ours are the most important after all being who we are. We are the Adams, after all. Uh, so the Adams meet Seinfeld, technically. Well, yes, that's true. So, um, the, we had, uh, it, it was very interesting that two of the original actors... Wait, wait, Slappy also wants to say that he enjoyed it and he's kind of picky, so he's saying that he liked it. Is he saying it as if he were Slappy Adams and such? Or? Well, he can be, yes. Okay. He's part of our family. He became, he was just a roommate and then we got pretty close, so yeah. He does have the, the, the fashion too, like, yes, look at like very fashionable. So, he would be sorry for interrupting, but he thinks that we should have asked his opinion first, so he's not sorry. So. Oh, well, good to know. And I, I apologize for interrupting you, but he was going to natter on until I, like, did that. So, I apologize. He does not. Very good. Okay, now I'm showing both sides of the box in which it came. So, it was interesting that... Uh, two of the original actors that played respectively Lurch and Uncle Fester reprised their roles in this animated series. Which is nice because like sometimes when I watch the chipmunks from the 80s and then I watch the ones now, the guy is Dave who does My Name is Earl and I'm just like, Earl and Dave? No, I miss the Dave from the cartoon. The voice is so distinct that it just kind of sticks. It, you notice it's wrong. And the Smurfs now sound like people, like growing up big people instead of little smurfs which is weird just so i think sometimes the voices really matter and it was kind of neat to have fester and lurch sound the same yes i agree it brings to mind the atmosphere and it was uh, interesting to learn a, a little about each of the actors they all have fascinating histories ted cassidy who played lurch uh, it seemed like, uh, similarly to Fred Green from The Monsters, it was a parallel development to my mind where the show opened all kinds of doors for him, where he went on to become a major star in voice and specifically, and he played later The Incredible Hulk and other big uh, shows, voicing the characters, of course. And it was uh, all the more interesting because his uh, childhood like, was one of the first cases of bullying to me. Like That was a real case of bullying instead of like the kind that we hear about today and such, where he was uh, tormented by people because of his height and stuff. He was already six feet tall around high school. And Uncle Fester, played by Jackie Coogan, was uh, the very first uh, child star that we know in Hollywood history. He played still in silent films and uh, in those that uh, the star which was Charlie Chaplin, so he was well known. So Gomez even knew about in Russia, I was impressed that he said that he was really, that Chaplin was really popular in Russia. Ah, yes, that was true. It's uh, that criticism, uh, subtle criticism of capitalist society could not go unanswered and rewarded in uh, communist Russia where I'm from, so. But we're such capitalist pigs! <laughs> and we like it. <laughs> Uh, so that was Jackie Coogan. He became. Uh, Sophie wants everyone to know he's also a shameless capitalist pig and he thinks you should all watch him in Goosebumps. Oh, as soon as you're finished watching us. Dress as appropriately, too. Yes. And what else? Yes. Uh, so Jackie Coogan, he also got uh, very rich as a child, even, but his parents apparently squandered it. So he became also famous for being the first child star who actually sued his parents for squandering his money and actually winning the case. I remember Tiffany did that later. Yeah, that was. I, mean, I read about it, I think, pretty recently when she was on some other show, like, and her grandma took care of her and stuff, so it was interesting. Like, he set an example for other stars to be independent, even way later, is the point of that. Yes. Um, and I had to, I was smiling when you, I noticed you looked over at me when you were talking about Lurch, because I was smiling. Uh, because our friend Lurch, I could so see him doing the Hulk thing, like, you don't like me when, you won't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he could be a good Hulk. <laughs> but he's very kind to us. And yes, but when you said that Lurch had played Hulk, I was like, oh, I could see, I could see ours doing both too. Like, yes, we agree. We wouldn't like ourselves when we're angry either, and neither should others. That's true. Then uh, we have Cindy Henderson, who was famous for many roles. Uh, she was part of I Dream of Jeannie. She was part of. Slappy, the... you have to settle down. Partridge Family. 
she was part of some other big shows and she participated in both the animated episode that gave rise to this Adam's Family series, uh, the Scooby-Doo episode where Wednesday is missing. And Did you all know Scooby-Doo and the Adam's Family had a collab? The first meaningful true collab. So well said. Uh, it was well done too because uh, I noticed right away when I saw the first episode of the Adams Family that <laughs> Slab is excited. He's trying to dance, but right now we're trying to do a review. Well, it's good that he's trying to dance to our song. Well, yes, but maybe I should just turn it down so he can just go ahead. I'm sorry, Gomez. Very well. Slappy is sorry. He's just overcome. That happens to the best of us and the worst. <laughs> So, uh, it, uh, I, I think I liked Cindy Henderson maybe slightly better even than the original uh, actress Lisa Lauren in the first Adams Family series on TV in 1964 because I guess this Wednesday was a little bit older, like a teenager. The other Wednesday was really tiny. But I like the tiny one because in the comic strip that was written, you know, way that started the whole thing, she was little. That is true, and it's an accurate representation of what Charles Adams had in mind. But uh, I guess I got used to th that portrayal more somehow. It seemed From Christina Ricci and, and such. And yes, movies. Christina Ricci so inspired me. I could not see anybody else but Christina Ricci doing Wednesday. Well, if you think about it as Wednesday growing up, because at first I was thinking, this is all wrong. That's not how old she is. It's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Because, you know, when you get used to the original, anything other than the original sometimes can seem wrong. But I was like, well... She's going to grow up, so just imagine time passing. This is the passage of time. We still look beautiful and young. Our children grow. That's Aww. what will happen whenever we have children. Yes. <laughs> They're so gentle. I can see them just now. <laughs> thinking about... No, that's me just thinking about dark. I'm sorry. Okay. Slip inspired me with distractions and stuff. So uh, You're thinking about turkey because you smell it. Yes, I think that must be it. We didn't cook any person yet in our oven. Not yet. Not yet. So that the witch borrowed our oven for Hansel and Gretel, we did not know about it. Well, sometimes we let people borrow our oven when we, they prove their cooking skills. Yes, but we don't always feel responsible for what happens. Yes, we decline all responsibility. And if you're wondering what this has to do with anything, it was a connected digression. Oh, that's beautiful. Turkey. I wasn't wondering, but I, I like that idea. Well, I was talking to our viewers, oh, our good. dear YouTube friends. Yes, good. Yes, okay. Now, <laughs> we were talking about Wednesday. Yes. So, Wednesday was played by Cindy Henderson in both the introduction to the Adams Family and the Adams Family itself. And I think she did it really well. Uh, I could hear her being authentic Wednesday. Uh, Pugsley was interesting because his role was combined by several people. There was, of course, the famous Jodie Foster that uh, voiced him. But apparently, uh, at least some sites claim that Ken Weatherwax also reprised his role as the original Pugsley in the animated series. It's not everywhere proven, so I have no conclusive evidence either way. But Ken Weatherwax is interesting because, other than being the cutest Pugsley ever, he <laughs> is also famous because his uncles were the ones who trained uh, the famous Lassie, the great Lassie. Uh, I'm unimpressed with dogs. Well, yes, uh, <laughs> because we have octopus and alligator, so we... And bird, yes. the vulture, when she goes back to the cartoon. What the, was the, the vulture's name anyway? Oh dear, why did you have to ask me that? It I've forgotten. It was a tricky trivia. I've forgotten. But we do know. Would someone like to tell us? Because I've forgotten. Yes, and we do, do own it, so we should actually technically go back and watch it. But right now we're watching something else. And I'm sure we'll go back and rewatch it. But this series showed the Adams family having pets. And they're traveling around the country in their haunted house RV. So it's like an RV, but it looks like a haunted house, so it's brilliant. Yes. And their, the main series is consisting of them traveling around in this RV. And all the different adventures they get into when they are traveling and it's very entertaining it's not childlike it's not primitive you know how you watch some cartoons that are out now or that you liked as a child and you're like okay this is just not stimulating my mind i'm bored and i get that kids would like this but i'm not a child so i'm not into this um this is an advanced cartoon i think the plots could actually have worked the same in the show itself um in the actual you know 60s show before it was a cartoon. I think the plots could have still been done if they wanted to do that. So they're not childlike, they're not amateur. The Adams Family personalities still come across very well, as Gomez said with Wednesday. Um, I think it would work for all of them and the same plot. So it's not like they totally dumbed the Adams Family down for a cartoon. That is a good point. Thank you. 
Uh, yes, I like uh, the unusual perspective that the Adams are fa uh, famous for. No matter what situations they encounter, they always seem to win, even when it appears like they're the naive ones, they're on the losing side, they always prevail somehow. Which is always reassuring for somebody like, like us. Like we do. Yes. Yes, because weird things happen to us all the time and we still come out okay. And it was a pleasant touch, I think, that um, the original series sort of focused on them being in their home atmosphere, their turf, and they're always there. Where this series, uh, as Martisha said, takes them into different situations and allows them to explore different things. And allows other people to meet them, to learn to appreciate them most times. Even when they're crooks, they learn to appreciate and fear. So it was a very nice offshoot, even semantically from the original one, an extension of it instead of just repetition and imitation. Yes, and I think that's good because a lot of times when a show is redone, it's like, what's the point? Like, why do what's already been done? Just reissue it or something. It's perfect. So, but they kind of continued. As I mentioned with, okay, you can see Wednesday growing up, sort of. Like, okay, you can see them doing something else. What would they be doing when they're not always at home? Like, um, so yeah, I think that's another good point, Gomez. Good, thank you. And I, I don't know if this is meant as a compliment to Jodie Foster's femininity or not. I don't really mean it as anything, as a statement of fact only. But when she speaks for Pugsley, I didn't keep thinking, God, Pugsley sounds like a girl. Like, Pugsley did, he sounded like a little boy. So I guess Jodie kind of has a lower voice and she sounded like a little boy. So it worked. Yeah, I, I never questioned it either. It's very I kept forgetting. I read it before we bought the series. I read that and went, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to think about that when we're watching and I totally never did so <laughs> I just it totally I forgot it again because it was just well done and she sounded enough like a little boy not a little effeminate girly girl so and as far as the other actors go at first I was regretful that the original Marticia Carolyn Jones could not take part in it I thought I would lack but uh, Janet Waldo, who subbed for her in the animated series was actually really good her voice was rich I would Call it the velvet of voice. I, I don't know what Martisha thought, but... I thought it was done well. Yeah, it's like, it's very charming, very interesting, very Martisha-like tone. So I think Janet Walder did very well. Now, Gomez was very different, very different. Um, I'll let him comment more on that, but I just have to say that at first, I just thought it seemed weird and I had to get used to it. And then I kind of got used to it. Um, it was a kind of a higher voice, but not like a girl, just a different register. Um, almost Crypt Keeper-esque, which would be a good thing. Almost. I mean, I'm not saying he sounded like the Crypt Keeper. We're talking about key and pitch, sort of, kind of, sort of. Um, just higher than Gomez is. And um, he would have these weird tones. And I was thinking, are they trying to make robot Gomez? Like, he's sounding, I don't know. I don't know. Like, sometimes when it's so weird, it's hard to really put an accurate description to it other than, I don't know. Um, stilted or robotic but then I noticed I think he's trying to sound like eerie maybe and then I started liking it more and it, I just wish I had a quote but it would be like um um the quote we if I'm either. saying oh we let we let someone you know what what's the smell is it turkey and then you know let's just say Gomez is like I'm not sure dear we let the wicked witch bo borrow our oven it was like you know why are you talking like this? It's rather different. So it seemed kind of like Gomez in the show did not have that tone, but I think he was maybe just trying to sound charmingly eerie or something. And once that clicked for me, I actually liked it. Yeah. And so I think, again, it's like when you expect something to be like it was in a voice, you're not going to get into it. Gomez's voice looked different. Gomez looked a little different, and I'll let Gomez himself talk about that. <laughs> um, but, you know, I kind of got, I kind of got into it, at least the voice. It's, um, I think you would sound very charming with those tones, my dear. <laughs> I don't know if they would sound quite natural. I think they could if you practice. Oh, I suppose. You can, when you practice, darling, you do everything well. Oh, you're so charming. Anything you set your mind to, you do it well. Oh, cara mia. Mon cher. Oh. But it's interesting that Martisha mentioned uh, the robotic quality because Lenny Weinrib does have a history of voicing specifically such characters. He played Walter in Defender of the Universe. Uh, he played uh, the other, what was it? The Jetsons, which is a futuristic series. Which I was just talking about recently. Yes. I assume that's where he meant. I didn't know any of this because I only read up somewhat and I didn't know this, so I must say I'm all in. Uh, yes, I like uh, the, the little <laughs> trivia, but uh, it's funny how Martisha instinctively connects all the dots. It must be her skill at crying. I Aww. cannot describe to anything else. <laughs> I just get lucky. Oh, I don't think it's luck. It's pure skill, my dear. Pure skill. Oh, thank you, darling. 
So I, I imagine that's where the two main actors met, Janet Waldo and Lenny Weiner, because both participated at the Justin show. Uh, as for my personal impression, uh, what do you think, Slappy? Was he good? Oh, he just wanted attention. Oh, good. Well, I, I give it to him. Slappy, darling, every video can't be about you. You got to participate in the Christmas one and the, the announcement of the Christmas one and your own review and many others. You have to just like, not make it all about you and your ego. We have egos, too. No, okay. no, it can't be about him. He is from Goosebumps. We're not, so no. Well, we are fine with that. We were in Scooby-Doo once. That's too. <laughs> he said that's not exactly a compliment. You know what, Slappy? Be quiet. He can't be. He's so eloquently quiet at least. <laughs> but as for my personal impression, I guess that was the one actor that maybe I thought could have been done slightly better. Of course, being Gomez, I'm very selective. But, and I am very particular. I liked the charming tones of John Astin. I liked uh, the Raul Julia impressions later too. He was not my favorite, but I still appreciate the animated quality of his voice. And the animation lacked, and of course you can hear that I myself am animated as well, so naturally I would be <laughs> partial to that kind of thing. So Lenny Weinrib did not strike me at first, I had to get used to him. And I did get used to him, and I liked the plots in which he participated. I liked his outlook, I liked his personality, the way he portrayed it. But the voice... Did you have a man crush, darling? Or was it not quite that much like him? Um, he didn't quite stew enough in grandmama's juices for me to develop that kind of affection yet. Okay, I am just going to walk away from that one. I'm sure you meant the pot and her, her cauldron, but I'm well, just going to... I'm going to walk away from all of it. Oh, good. I'm just going to move on because my imagination at times disturbs me. Oh, what about Slappy? Oh, uh, he's... Is he going he, to stay? Or? He's not interested in that. Okay. He's moving on. <laughs> well... Uh, if Slappy doesn't even want to touch it. That must be really hot. Yeah, sometimes like Gomez doesn't listen to himself when he talks. I You're suppose not. I just go. Yeah. <laughs> where we are. And I'm like, Gomez, darling, you shouldn't have. Oh, <laughs> querida. As Lenny Weiner would say. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting series. Uh, I especially. How like, did you feel about the way he looked? I uh, do recall a comment or two. Ah, uh, so so. I felt that some parts of it were like a little exaggerated, but I liked other parts. So I guess I was divided until eventually I learned to remember it well. So you're saying you don't feel like he was as hot as you are, and that well, could have made well, him hotter with be? the animation. Yes? Just look at me. Yes, you're beautiful. Yes, good. <laughs> and. I liked the special editions of the pets. I liked Ella the alligator and Oko the octopus. They were kind of charming. And, and I the vulture, because I actually specifically, well, we both um, love birds, but I have always had a bird growing up. Um, and so that was very nice that Morticia had the vulture on her shoulder all the time. Yes. And of course she had her plant. Yes. That was fun. What else? Uh, well, maybe that's it. Like, uh, I guess we covered all the interesting points. Yeah, it was a good cartoon. It's fun to watch them travel and, as Gomez said, get to see their pets. And I was just very pleased that the plots were developed. So, yeah, it was very fun, very cute, amusing, charming. The differences were still very tolerable and different. And it was, it was captivating. I yes. don't think we were ever bored during any of it. And we want to watch it again. And we can because we own it. How many episodes? That's what I was trying to figure out, but it wasn't quite as visible. I remember that they... Well, open it. Well, I do, but... <laughs> Does it not say on there? I mean, it's each disc only is the episodes that participate on it, so... It I think it was like two seasons worth or something, but they were pretty short. There are four discs. I want to say that each one had about four episodes, so around 16 to 20 episodes, I would yeah, say. Yeah, give or take. Okay. So, yeah, just I wanted to give them a general ballpark. So, you did. Thank you. Good. And so, yeah, it's definitely worth the investment. I think we'll enjoy rewatching, as Gomez said. And it wasn't too bad of a price. I think I can't say maybe 30 some can't remember. That sounds right. Something like that. So, you know, um, none of the Adams Family is specifically cheap to buy, so this was doable. And it's really fun to have all the different ones that we can get because there's been so many incarnations, and if you haven't heard of all of them, you will, because eventually we will have them and review them all here. 
If you are new, please like, subscribe, share, and join us for more fun, spooky reviews. And until our next video, have oh, try to enjoy the daylight. <laughs>